Hey everybody, Ryan Gromfin here, author, speaker, chef, restaurateur, founder of TheRestaurantBoss.com, ClickBacon.com, and ScaleMyRestaurant.com. I am so excited today. It's freezing outside, but how much fun is this? I'm talking with Ahmed. Ahmed is awesome. We're going to talk about him for a couple of minutes here, but seriously, to get invited on this show, you got to be one of my favorite people in the world. Ahmed is absolutely one of my favorite people in the world, and so is his wife, Raneem. We're going to talk about it, but his restaurant is called Cairo to Go, and yep. since it's four degrees outside in Texas right now, why not set up the green screen and let's hang out by some pyramids in Egypt, right? Yeah. First of all, Ahmed is such an awesome dude. He sent a, a King Tut little guy to my son who absolutely loves that. We've been working together for 18 months or so now, but I'm going to tell you more about him in a second. But what's really important is that this dude is a survivor. This guy uh, has been through hell and back. It might still even be in a little bit of hell right now, but he is fighting. COVID was kicking their butt, and they've done some really cool things that we're going to talk about here in a second. But this is just one question live, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, Ahmed, you want to say anything before I ask you my question and then give you your chance to ask me your question? Let me start by thank you for having me and for the great introduction, man. Come on. I don't deserve all of this. The boss does. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say the boss, who are we talking about? Uh, Ranim, of course. You're, and who is Ranim so everyone knows? Yeah, yeah, my wife. Your uh, wife. That's right. Yeah. So when he says the boss, he's talking yeah. about his wife. But the owner, she's the boss. In all seriousness, there's no point of me telling you kind of about what Ahmed's doing. We'll get to it here in a second. But let's jump in right now to just one question. So I've got this question written down because we've been working on it. I want to make sure I read this right. But here's the question. How is it possible that you're operating three restaurants out of your one location? And how did you choose these types of restaurants since your brick and mortar restaurant is an Egyptian restaurant? So go ahead and tell us kind of all about your ghost kitchens, how you got there and how you're operating your three restaurants, so two ghost kitchens and your current restaurant out of one spot. It's all yours, buddy. Take it away. Well, f first of all, thank you for the intro again. Uh, the 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 whole thing about Cairo to Go, when we started Cairo to Go, we wanted to basically offer good, authentic Egyptian food on the go, um, fast, uh, very cost efficient, and fresh all, all the time. Uh, and we were doing well but we weren't doing as well before we met Ryan. So as soon as we met Ryan, things things changed. Let me just put it that way. Uh, and uh, and and what what we discovered is we lacked a lot of uh, processes, procedures, systems, checklists, cheat sheets, uh, bill sheets, all of the stuff that can help our our employees and our customers enjoy a better meal and our please do a better job and because uh, it was all on my shoulder and my wife's shoulder and uh, she was the one running the kitchen she was the one doing all of the prep and the recipes and all of that and once we got to the point of fixing a uh, good proper procedure uh, with recipes written down properly for the average American to actually do like uh, imagine the average everyday american cooking all authentic egyptian food that's 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 what's good about this and, and there's so there's there are different spices different techniques things that we're not used to yep yep well, it, it's a whole different world of of cooking and a whole different cuisine uh but there is nothing weird to it it's just a different way of doing things but at the end of the day do the right thing, work with your system, do the checklists, do everything right. And eventually people will just, you know, train them and they will get it as, as just like any other restaurant. And then COVID hit. Now, what we had, a, we had a bit of, a, of an advantage because we already were to go. And that helped us uh, immensely because we already had signed, we were signed up with Grubhub, we were signed up with DoorDash. All of our packaging was already to go, so there was no thinking about how we're going to do this. It was already done. Um, then uh, the reality hit of having 80% of our sales come through third, even more. Oh my God, it was 
almost 95% the first two months uh, coming from third uh, third delivery party or third party apps, uh, Grubhub, DoorDash, you know, you know the the drill. And uh, and the problem was the fees, the fees, the fees, the fees, and and that that really made our life hard. And then in a discussion with Ryan, he was like, hey, what about a ghost kitchen? And uh, we were like, all right, let's see. And uh, we um, actually made a little bit of uh, Grubhub work. The, the people at Grubhub helped us out immensely when it comes to that. And uh, we'll by the directions of Ryan too. Uh, <laughs> we'll give you credit for that, man. That was genius. So I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you here for one second. Keep your train of thought here. Just for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with what a ghost kitchen is, what we're talking about is operating a restaurant inside of a current restaurant. Now there's all kinds of different types of ghost kitchens, virtual kitchens, dark kitchens, cloud kitchens, whatever you want to call it. But what we're talking about here, what Ahmed did um, is opened up a totally different restaurant. It's not even serving the same food. It's utilizing some of the ingredients and hopefully I'll talk about that more, but opened up a totally different restaurant that only gets delivered, well, mostly only gets delivered, has become so popular within his current restaurant. So sorry, I just wanted to clarify that in case anyone wasn't sure. Yep, yep. So we, we started with tray pasta and believe it or not, you know, an Egyptian restaurant serving pasta is, is, uh, is, is insane, it's funny. Uh, but it, it's, it's still good because it's done with the same love that we did Cairo to go. We just focused on pasta. Now, the we already had the equipment to go to get. Now, how did you decide on pasta? You touched on it a little bit, but I want people to make sure they understand. Oh, so so uh, we contacted our uh, Grubhub uh, rep, and uh, and he was our account manager, and he was the one who basically told him, "Hey, just let me know where is the gap in the market. Tell me what are people looking for. What are people looking for that is not being met enough." And he came up with uh, three things. It was um, Asian sushi, I think. And we're, I, I love sushi, but I'm not going to fix sushi. <laughs> that was too it. far. Yeah. Too far from Egypt. <laughs> Ra- Ranim is, is, is up in, in grabs and that, but that's for us. Not, we're not going to sell sushi. And just so everybody knows, Ranim does the cooking. Oh, of course. I can't cook <laughs> if my life depended on it. Uh, I know so- that from our conversations. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just come on, man! Don't put me on. <laughs> uh, and uh, then we had salads and pasta, and we chose pasta because pasta is um, is doable. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think is missing uh, in pasta because there's there's a huge difference between corporate America pasta, which is good, and when it comes to pricing but it doesn't really deliver a good quality product. And then there is the Italian upscale pasta that is also amazing, but it's very expensive. So we tried to get the middle line there, deliver a very good quality product with uh, a little bit of, uh, with a little bit of uh, discount in the price. So basically a good price, good product, have everybody winning. And um, yeah, thank God it's, uh, it's picking up. First month wasn't, you know, wasn't really that that much, and then started picking up again. And, and you know, but by now it's 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 it's, its own beast in a way, uh, which I, which I, which is what I love. Um, obviously, we had to make kitchen arrangements. We had to re-update our our everything, our prep sheets, our prep lists, our whole new recipes. What made it easier was the systems again, because we already understood how to do systems for Cairo. It was just a, a matter of doing the work to create another system for tray pasta, and and make it easier for that. That made it easier for us to run two restaurants at the same time. Uh, we only had to hire somebody else to run the pasta line while we're already running the Cairo line and we had the, the dedicated space for pasta. And that was basically it. Pasta's working, Cairo's working, two different restaurants, same location. Um, and then we came up with the Angry Five Hot Fried Chicken, <laughs> uh, which is also, uh, you know, same same thing. Just look for a market gap. And in this case, we didn't really contact Grubhub in, in my town of Morgantown. 
We only have uh, Popeyes and um, and KFC, um, and and there's none. There's nobody who's serving Nashville hot fried chicken uh, the way we're doing it in Morgantown. So we decided, all right, there's a market gap there. Let's just make it fun and and uh, and just grab the equipment, processes, procedures, recipes, prep sheets, cheat sheets, all of the good stuff designate a space in the kitchen. Obviously we have a bigger kitchen than what we needed for Cairo to go. Uh, so that helped us a lot. And um, yeah, hopefully we, Ranin told me I will kill you if you think about a fourth. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Whoa, 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 we're, already, we're talking about a third, a third ghost. So there will be a fourth. Yes. Well, yeah, well, it's gonna be the fourth baby. We already have two babies and then we have like, we have two kids and then now we have three restaurants. So, you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be a fourth. Well, I want a fourth. There's gonna be a fourth. We already know what it is. It's in the works. There's gonna be a fourth. But we will. We will. Definitely will. So but, I just I want to, or unless there was more you wanted to add there, I wanted to kind of clarify a couple things. I I just want to reiterate: systems work, processes, procedures work. It takes time to get them done. It is a lot of work to have them, uh, but once you have them, you have them. You, you know, you won't look at, at your restaurant the same way uh, before that. Just, just yeah, that's that's all I want to say. And so I think what, what Ahmed's talking about here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but just from us having our weekly calls and everything else is, you know, there was a period where Cairo to go was hard. And then we simplified a little bit Cairo to go. And then we dramatically overhauled your recipes, your systems, your processes, your procedures to the point where three months before that, you couldn't even think about doing something else. But then I don't want to say easy, but Cairo to go went from hard to totally manageable. So then you had time, you had excess time, which you could either sit on a beach, you could travel, or you could open up another restaurant in this case. And then when you opened up that other restaurant, it went to hard again, right? And so then what we did is we went back through your original systems, processes, procedures, and we looked at your new systems, processes, procedures. And then again, I don't want to say easy, but it leveled out. And then we added a third and it got hard. And then we went through all that and we're in the process of leveling that out. So we will do a fourth. But we will do the fourth when, when you're ready, when you've leveled out again, when Renee is as overwhelmed as she is right now. By the way, let's give Ahmed a big, huge... Uh, not a round of applause, but pat on the back, whatever you want to call it. But he was a couple minutes late today, and I got a phone call from him that so two people called out sick. So thank you. Yeah. This is the restaurant business. I appreciate it. Um, everyone out there appreciates it, and you're a rock star. But again, what I just – and add anything you want here before you get to throw me on the spot and ask me, just so everyone knows how this works. I let Ahmed or the guests know what the question's going to be so they can prepare for it. I have no idea what Ahmed's going to ask me. And I see that smile, so I can't wait. I, I, I've been thinking about that one. Good, 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 good. Yep. But again, what, what we saw happen here was hard, work on it, level it off. Then you then you have time to level up your game again. It's going to be hard for a while. That's fine. But then we work on it, we level it off, and then yep. we keep – look at those pyramids, right? The first layer, and then the second layer, and the third layer, and the fourth layer, and you just keep building layer by layer. Sorry, I just saw that. Anyways – uh, anything you want to add there and then throw me on the spot. Ask me my yeah. question. It's just don't tell Renim that we're working on the fourth. All right. Just the, the thought. Just We'll yeah. make sure that Renim doesn't see this video that's on five <laughs> networks right now. And we'll be search engine optimized that anytime she looks at anything, this video is going to show up on top. But we'll make sure she never sees it. Ghost kitchens are changing the restaurant industry forever. They've created the single best opportunity to grow your brand or create a new one than I have ever seen. The recent boom in online ordering and third-party delivery has made this model simpler to take advantage of, but it has also created more competition. In order to succeed, you must follow proven strategies for developing your concept, implementing technology, and nailing your marketing. That is why I created the Ghost Kitchen Bootcamp. So you can go from developing your concept to opening your own ghost kitchen that absolutely crushes it in just one week. Now, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So the, let me, 
because it's a complicated one. And by the way, look at how funny this is. My water bottle's green. And yeah. I have a green screen, so I just realized I'm gonna have to get a different color water bottle. But look, my water bottle's see through. How creepy is that? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, so, the, coming from Egypt, we're the country where everything gets delivered. One of the things that threw me off in the States as a business owner and as a person who, who started living here, moved here, is that delivery was not a big part of you know, the culture in general. People would rather go and pick it up themselves or, uh, you know, dine in. Now, COVID has changed the game completely. Uh, and if it wasn't for our ghost kitchens, we would have been out of the business a long time ago because of the third-party delivery fees, because of the lack of people coming in and, you know, the upselling opportunities, the sharing of an experience opportunities, all of this stuff is gone because of COVID. Now we're hopefully we're getting out of this whole COVID mess within what the next five or six months. Where do you see the restaurant industry three years from now having the change and the flip that, that we went through as restaurant tours and as customers as well? Um, and and yeah, I, I just don't want to have it a longer version of it, but I think you'd get the gist of it. So I took a couple of notes. So I want to make sure I touch on it. So basically where do I see the restaurant industry in three years? Yeah. Okay. But with, with the, with the whole digital experience, basically just overriding uh, brick and mortar stuff. So the biggest thing that I see is that human beings, this isn't about Americans, Egyptians, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, New Zealanders, Kiwis, this is human beings. Human beings don't go backwards. We only move forward. So from the start of this, from a year ago, one of the big things that I kept saying is stop using the word, when are we going to get back to normal? There is no normal. What we thought was normal is gone. So there's the new normal. And the, the best example I use is, you know, in the 20s, if you were taking your best gal out to dinner, you would have put on a three-piece suit and she'd have her hair done up and you'd have a cigarette with a long extension thing and gloves and you would dance the night away at a 50-piece live band. It would be dinner dancing the whole night. Okay, by the 40s and 50s, nobody ate dinner like that anymore. When you even think back to the 70s or 80s, no one eats like that. Everything changes, things change. Go to a restaurant in your town that's been open or a hotel for a hundred years and look at a menu that they served a hundred years ago and ask yourself if you would eat anything on that menu today. So maybe the restaurant is still there, but the menu's changed. So first and foremost, there is no normal. So anyone who's out there who's thinking it's going to be normal again, it's not going to be normal again. Now, with regards to technology, what I, what I see is the technology is going to keep getting better and better. It's going to get less expensive to the restaurant operator. It's going to get, we're going to get better at upselling. The websites are going to get better. The user experience is going to get better as we start hitting critical mass and as we adopt it more. I mean, again, look at Amazon 10 years ago as a bookstore. And, you know, maybe you ordered one or two things. I remember when my brother, like eight or nine years ago, was like, you got to become an Amazon Prime member. I'm like, I'm going to pay $75 a month for the right to order stuff from a company that I still have to pay shipping for, you're out of your mind. Now, I, I can't live my life without Amazon. So I do think things change. So again, uh, going forward to this in three years, it, there is gonna be so much of your business done online, it's gonna be ridiculous. In the state of the restaurant industry address that I did a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this bow tie graph and um, if you can just picture a bow tie, right? It's wide on the sides. I'm trying to do it wide on the sides. And it gets narrow in the middle. And what I'm talking about is the squeeze in the middle. You're going to have these digital restaurants, these ghost kitchens, these factories, if you will. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what your restaurant becomes. We're, we're commoditizing. Now we can decommoditize by offering unique food and things like that. But really at the end of the day, there's no service aspect. There's no dining room aspect. There's none of that. It's just food. It's production. It's a warehouse. It's a factory. Those are going to grow massively. Then on the other side is going to be the experience, the restaurants that have massive dining rooms with games and 
and uh, cornhole and big bars and TVs and and arcades and where uh, bowling centers, bocce ball, axe throwing. I'm working with guys that are opening up an axe throwing restaurant right now. So you're going to have, in my opinion, and then of course there's going to be the fine dining. And what I see in fine dining, see fine dining to me is an experience. And I think fine dining to people is an experience. So it's less about the food. It's more about the experience of dining. So again, I'm trying to get in camera here. You're going to have the experiential restaurants that are going to grow. And then you're going to have the factory warehouse type restaurants that are going to grow. The squeeze, in my opinion, is going to be the bow tie in the middle is going to be your average, ordinary, everyday restaurant. A Chili's, an Applebee's, an Olive Garden, just your average. Those are just the big corporate names, but potentially even Cairo to go could have ended up there. Now, Cairo to go would have been more on because look at the name to go. You know, you were built for delivery. So where I'm seeing things is what I'm calling purpose built restaurants. You can't just build a restaurant anymore and think about, well, we're going to do some dine in. We're going to do some dine out. We're going to do some parties. We're going to do some that. Like if you want to be a catering facility, you got to build it to be a catering facility. If you want to be an experiential restaurant, build it to be an experiential restaurant. If you want to be a restaurant that just delivers on food, you can keep your prices down by getting rid of the excess space, by getting rid of the excess labor, then do that and do that well, whether it be for delivery or pickup or whatever. But these purpose-built restaurants, delivery can no longer be an afterthought of a restaurant. So we're seeing clients that are custom building their um, their to-go packaging built specifically for their type of food. Uh, like a pho restaurant that I worked with had this handheld like cardboard box where the broth fit into the one side and then the toppings fit in at the top and it all snapped into place and it was handheld. So if a family ordered pho four, that's a hard one, four bowls of pho, there would literally just be like four of these carry handles. And so that was custom built and custom made for them and they're doing really well. So does that answer your question at all? Anything more specific? Yep. But Yep. It, it's, so how does the small guy survive? That's that's the after the change. Thing. Yeah, well, no, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you there, but sorry, I, just, it, I knew the answer to that instantly. Yeah, well, I, I I do too, but at the same time, change is not easy. No, there is nothing easy about digitalizing your your whole experience uh, as a small single unit restaurant operator like myself. We're seeing this happen in all industries. Look at my barbecue is digitally connected. It's what's called IOT, Internet of Things. Barbecue companies are now software companies. Every company in the world is now a software digital company, whether you want to be or not. So there's two things that I would say here. One, if you're not good at it, either get good at it or find someone who is good at it. And if you have kids that haven't decided what they want to be yet, I would suggest you start teaching them how to write software code. Because I don't see how any business can operate in the next five to 10 years without being great at some form of digital operation. Now, the ones that are going to do better are going to be better. You know, the best barbecues right now are not about barbecues anymore. They're about the best mobile app. The best delivery pizza right now is not about the best pizza. Domino's is crushing it in the technology world. About five years ago, they invested in what they call their garage, which is where they put the smartest brainiacs that they have working for them in a facility to just work on technology. And Domino's is crushing it. With technology, that's why their stock is going through the roof. That's why their sales are through the roof. Not because their pizza is better than Pizza Hut or Papa John's or anyone else. They just have better technology. So hard, yes. And I wish I could just sit here and wave magic wands and say we can make this easy. But you're living proof. Is anything that you've done in the last year with these ghost kitchens, has it been easy? Would you be in business today if you didn't do it? Hell no. We've been, we, we would have been out of business six or seven months ago. Right. And while I know you're not thriving yet, you're surviving, you're making changes, you're reinvesting when you will be thriving very soon. Yep. 
Yep. Well, it's the model is as you said. We're we're trying to adapt the uh, factory model, but with a with a good approach, with mo maybe a little bit of fun approach to it. Uh, but yeah, well, you have to choose where you want to go. And in, in our direction, I think it's more of the uh, factory model. And uh, I agree. I agree. Change is uh, change is inevitable. The only and, thing that is constant is change. And can you share with people a little bit of kind of what you're seeing of how like Trey Pasta started as it was just going to be delivery and what's starting to happen? Well, the people started coming in. At first, people didn't know where it was. And then, then they started ordering because it was in Grubhub and DoorDash. Then they started calling and then we would respond as Cairo to go. How can I help you? And I was like, oh, Cairo to go. Uh, how, what, you know, what, 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 how did you manage to do this and that? And, um, this answer was simple. We just have a uh, good, good, uh, staff, good people to help us like Ryan, obviously. Uh, and, um, a good boss again, she's, uh, she's not here, but you know, just, just in case. Uh, and, uh, we just were able to do that because of all of the stuff that I mentioned before. And now we are having people coming to pay in the restaurant. We've developed a tray pasta app uh, just to be able to mitigate some of the of the stuff that's happening. We're marketing tray pasta as a brand uh, on its own right now, uh, just like we're marketing Cairo to go. It's a it's its own brand. It has its own life, and uh, it has its own customer base who doesn't even know anything about Cairo to go or not even interested. And that's part of what I really like about this whole virtual kitchen is because you can speak to different types of demographics um, in, in a whole different way and it opens up worlds that you would never have opened with your authentic Egyptian or with my authentic Egyptian. And that's one of the reasons why we talked about this a lot is we thought you were a perfect candidate for this is because unfortunately, not just in the community you're in, but in the United States in general, your food is a little more exotic for most people, especially because of where you are. But not everybody is going to drive by an Egyptian restaurant and be like, I want to go try Egyptian food. But what's happening now is pasta, fried chicken. And again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but people are ordering from Trey Pasta, loving it. And you're sharing with them that you have another brand called Cairo to go. And now, because people trust you now, they're trying Cairo to go and they're loving it. Yep. And they're trying your chicken restaurant. So then someone who's a fried chicken customer is now a tray pasta and a Cairo to go customer and vice versa. And so really for you, we thought this was such a great opportunity because um, we were challenged in getting new people to try your restaurant. We tried a whole bunch of different things. And ultimately we thought the best way to get people to try your restaurant was for them to try a different restaurant <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then build the trust to get them. So again, I don't want to share anything that maybe um, if, if I'm speaking in any way in untruths or of anything, but um, it, cross marketing has has helped us immensely, and and yes, thank you for bringing that up. That is true. We're we're cross marketing all the time. Uh, hey, have you like every bag comes out with something in it? Uh, either have you tried carry to go to take discount off for this? Just go and try it. Have you tried tray pasta? Have you tried the angry five? And it and and the best thing about I don't want to say the best thing about COVID, but the best thing about what happened with the whole digital experience is that people are more willing to try new stuff if they have it at home and and they're more because at the end of the day everybody's bored of the same old same old stuff when you come up with some with something that is new with a unique selling proposition and you present it to the customer a lot of people will be willing to go ahead and try it once once at least once you know yep. they like it it's your job to make them like it it's your job to produce a good product at the end of the day and then boom you know you have a loyal customer and this was a slow and steady ramp up like we got Kyra to go going then we got Trey Pasta Trey Pasta was just on the digital platforms at first then there was a website then there was a mobile app then there was its own Facebook page then there was specific marketing for Trey Pasta now we're doing the same thing with the angry five hot chicken where it's just on the delivery platforms and we're developing the website and developing the app and we're getting the pictures taken and we're developing the social media page and the videos and the Facebook advertising and that'll ramp up. And that's what I'm saying is once all that's ramped up, then we're going to go on to the next one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we just won't tell Rene. Burgers or tacos? Oh, you talk. You, are you asking me or telling me? I'm just asking. Which, which one do you think we should go for? Can I say it? Yeah. Oh, there's no question it's burgers. 
All right. Uh, there's, yeah. There's I, no I, question because of, because of what we've proven success in your area. And again, we're not going to get into too many of your secret details, but yep. we know the model already now. Yep. But we're following yep. the same model all the way through. So we'll we'll leave it with that. All right. We'll, Ahmed's got to get back to work. I don't want to. We get tacos. What's that? First we get burgers, then we get tacos. Oh, we're doing five. You guys heard it here. Yeah, you heard it here on Just One Question Live. Ryan with the restaurant boss. Ahmed, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Ahmed, Raneem, I love you both. You guys are rock stars. I'll actually, I'll see you tomorrow or Thursday. I don't remember. Whatever. Tomorrow. tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. For all of you out there, thank you so much for joining us, whether you're watching this today, February 15th, where it is at 16th. It is absolutely freezing outside in Texas, but I'm in warm Egypt and I'm loving it here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, systems create freedom. Freedom creates value. Value creates scale. I love every single one of you crazy restaurant people. Have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.